<laughs> Hello and welcome to South of King's Landing, the Explosion Network's House of the Dragon After Show. We're here to discuss episode 5. My name's Tom White. Joining me, Ashley Hobley. Hey Don, excited to be here for, you know, the last appearance of, uh, you know, Emily Carey and Amelia Alcock. Mm. And we have 100% confirmation because they did post on, uh, the, or she did at least, uh, Emily, no, Millie, sorry, on, I saw on Instagram had a farewell sort of post, so. Yep. Sad times. Rest in peace. I mean, the actors They're still alive. alive. They're the all still alive. Still alive. Yeah. Characters still alive. It's just, you know, yeah. they grow up. They grow up so fast. The performance is dead. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. But, They'll live on uh, in fan art, I don't know. Imagine if there's, I feel so bad for this, uh, person coming in. What's her name again? I already forgot. Because... Uh, uh, yeah, she's gonna have Emma to... Darcy. Um, yeah, like yeah. everyone's grown to love Millie, so yeah, it's a rough. And the, I mean, yeah, I mean Emma was cast first, and the plan was always for her to play the role. It's just you know, yeah, bit awkward, bit awkward. Uh, yeah. This week's episode is titled "We Light the Way." A uh, synopsis of which is Damon visits his wife in the Vale. Viserys and Renera broker agreements with the Valerians. Alicent seeks the truth about the princess. It was directed by Claire Kilmer, written by Ryan J. Condal. Uh, actually, no, it was just written by Charmaine de Great. Sorry about that. Um, what do you think of this week's episode? Another really good episode, you know. Obviously, more uh, political intrigue, more, uh, you know. Uh, obviously we've got the big marriage between, uh, Rhaenerys and, uh, what's the other guy name? Corlys? Yep. Oh, no, not Corlys. The other Valerian dude. <laughs> Who uh, can't remember the name of. So where, so Lainor Valerian? Lainor, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's that. Uh, building up that union and, you know, finding out their secrets. Uh, and then you got, you know, uh, Alison learning about uh, Renera's big secret. Which uh, had s- very serious consequences for Kristen Cole in this episode. Um, so, yeah, it definitely leaves it off in a very interesting point for this, we assume, several year time jump uh, yeah. that we're about to experience. Um it almost feels like the end of a mini half season. So, I mean, mm. yeah, it, it, it definitely has come at the right point. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a really good episode. I feel like, like it started off good, but I, I feel like once we got to the, once they left, uh, whatever that palace place is called, they went to anyway, that, the, the Larian place, the veil, vale, um, the, that's it. Uh, the, no, it wasn't from, the veil. The veil's no? where, uh, Damon was. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's right. Anyway, their castle thing. Um, once we left there, I feel like we got like a bunch of really great scenes. So either between Renera and Kristen on the boat was really good, obviously, mm-hmm. and then the entire wedding scene was just. Or no, sorry, not the wedding. The entire like the banquet, banquet scene, pre-wedding yeah. scene um, was just like one thing after another of uh, really good sort of character interactions and performances and stuff like that. In particular, my favourite thing about this episode, and I've seen already people on Twitter saying the same thing, which is that Matt Smith, I don't think, says, like, one thing this entire episode, but 
Well, he does say, like, he has a couple of He said several things <laughs> at yeah. the end. But, but the end, but for the majority of this episode, it's just, it's just him looking, and that's all you need. Like, you don't need, <laughs> you just, you know. But also, Viserys just absolutely, like, watching little spot fires happen everywhere around him, <laughs> like, um, it's a bother thing, like, either he's looking at his brother, getting threatened over someone accusing him of killing his, uh, his uh, wife, which of course he did, but um, then he's like watching her, uh, him and his daughter would be queen, and he's like dealing with his wife, the queen. Actually, like you know, that was a whole big moment coming in, and the was it green? And they explain that's like the color war or some shit. So yeah, yeah, that whole scene was just a lot of shit going on. Um, how do you? Uh, <laughs> what do you? I want to jump to the main. I guess the main thing from the episode, but. To me, it feels like the main thing, which is the Sir Kristen stuff. Um, yeah. In particular, his actions at the end of the episode. What's the go there, do you reckon? Well, you know, uh, Lainor's uh, partner <laughs> pretty much comes up to Sir Kristen Cole and says, we know your secret, you better keep your secret, uh, and everything will be happy. So Kristen Cole, uh, make sure uh, that his secret is safe from that one person. <laughs> It just seems excessive. Dude. It like, does seem excessive and the wrong place at the wrong time, really. Yeah. You, know, you really could have, you could have killed him any time, you know, but did you have to, like, fight in the middle of the the thing? Um, but, yeah, it seems to be setting up, you know, Kristen Cole being aligned with Alicent going forward uh, because he's got she's got this secret over him and, by extension, Rhaenyra. So. Which is weird if she's going to try to hold it over him because he's someone who was just, he's like, all right, you know. Just, he's just uh, about to kill just himself. Kill well, he was like, just kill me. Just, you know, get over it. Yeah. Like, I admit to what I did. You can kill me. But, you know, he's so in love with Rhaenyra that he would do whatever to keep the secret and from her ruining Rhaenyra's reputation or whatever, I assume. Mm. It was a lot. I didn't, I didn't see it coming, so. It was a lot. <laughs> I love that scene on the boat because... Man, I so wanted her to go away with Kristen Cole. Yeah. You know? That would have been great on the road together to have so much fun. Uh, but, you know, the draw of the Iron Throne and responsibility. It's strong. Not even the prospect of marrying cousin could put you off it. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. Like, watching the whole start of this episode, it's like, hello, cousin. Hello, cousin. Um, looking forward to getting married, cousin? Eh, not really. I'm into turkey. You know what, what the you weirdest into? thing is? I'm into chicken. <laughs> That cousin was one of, the, like, the little kids from, like, the second, first episode, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. <laughs> She's got to be, like, 16, something like that, at the very least. I mean, I sh- yeah, I think that's roughly yeah. what the, the age Maybe. point is. yeah. Something right like that. The, the ages of them all a bit weird in the timeline, I don't know. They grow up very quickly. Or they could be they- different kids, potentially. Yeah, I think they purposely keep them the ages a little bit vaguer to help the audience. I don't know. Like, was, um, yeah. But I don't know because his sister is meant to be the girl that was meant to marry. They wanted to marry Viserys, right? I think so. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is that's that is it. Yes. Probably. But what? We know at least three, four years have passed? Yeah. So... so she- at the time, she was like, what, 11? <laughs> well, she looks younger, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now they're like teenagers, yeah. I guess. So, you know, the sooner we jump to this, the sooner we get to like a standard point where we don't have these massive time jumps uh, and everybody stays reasonably the same age for a long time, uh, that'll be pretty good. Yeah, well. Um, how far do you reckon we do jump ahead? Do we jump ahead and. Um renera has got a child. Or it's like, like next year. <laughs> it's like okay. the next day. We just switch the actors out. That's the only difference. <laughs> yeah. You know, Viserys dies. Everybody aged really fast. You know that someone's death. Someone's death like that will age you very quickly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, true. Um, I mean, really, it a- should. It makes sense to pick it up straight after, but they're not going to. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be weird. Um, Viserys, though, 
I think I said last week that I was like, oh yeah, like he'll be like he'll die in the last episode. I tell you what, I'll be surprised if this motherfucker holds on that long. Five more. Episodes. I think he, I think he died at the end of this episode. Do you reckon he did? Uh, that's what I think. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't. And then we, it. I assume, with the time jump jumps forward and they're battling over the who's who's in charge. You know. I feel like we have to see it though, and like see like it, the, it has to be a. He literally fell to the. <laughs> I guess he could just be limping on for several more years, so. Yeah, I, I, I think he survives. I think he survives. He just sits in a bath of leeches constantly, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, like, maybe he just has his entire arm cut off next time. Because his arm looked fucked up, so. Yeah, maybe. They cut his fingers off last time. Um, just finish the job, cut everything off. You know? Yeah, so maybe they'll try and cut his whole arm off. Yeah. And that might be a... Uh, to help him get a few more years or something. But, yeah, mm. I feel like I feel like he can't just do a, oh, did he actually die or did he just, like, faint sort of thing? I feel like when he dies, it needs to be a b- lot bigger of a moment because his death is what's going to spark the, the war, so. Yeah, see, see, him being infected by Iron Throne, pretty much, uh, it kind of very much explains why in Game of Thrones the throne is, like, kind of toned down. I feel like uh, what's-his-face in Season 1 would have come in and is like, no, nah, not having any of this sharp stuff. I want to clean this off, make it as, as safe for me as possible. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a Targaryen thing, I think. So yeah, the so, yeah. sword thing. So yeah, sort of makes sense. Um, other shout outs before I forget. I think this is the most I've seen Ryan Cord do. Cor- yeah, comes in, At- s- beats a bunch of people up. <laughs> Yeah, he he got treated like a badass. Like, old mate gives him the head nod, like, go in. And he goes in like Bane, just, like, smashing people through to get to Rhaenyra, so. Well, that's the new the new Hand of the King. Uh, yeah, whatever something. his name is, I can't remember. Linus? Lionel Strong? That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, so. So, Ryan calls his, uh... Who obviously is the one who's been, uh, one of the better parts of the, uh, the King's Council. Yeah, I think I, I like, because obviously the episode starts and you, they don't really tell you he's a Hand of King. You, well, you, you look see and, he's you, got the You see he's got the pin, pin so, bit, yeah. Pin, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like straight away like, oh yeah, this dude, this dude's like just been pretty, uh. It makes sense. <laughs> he's been pretty straightforward, a sh- straight shooter this entire season. Doesn't seem like he's out for himself, like an actual, yeah. seems like he's actually just out to help sort of thing, so. Um, what do you think of, uh. Otto, like, and uh, the conversation between Otto and um, Alicent, where they're, like, straight up just, you know, yeah, outwardly discussing their big plan, basically. Makes complete sense, you know. Uh, he <laughs> He's 100% right. Uh, I mean, there's always going to be a conflict between Rhaenyra and Aemo- Aegon, because, you know, he's a male and she's technically the heir. So, I don't know. Yeah. I guess he's ra- he's rational. He's taking. He doesn't want to risk the kids at all being caught in the crossfire, but uh, kind of ruthless. <laughs> he keeps like oh, he gives like two options. Though it's like it's not like there's any chance that there's any love between these two siblings. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like either you kill her and she kills all your family, or you know, like there's no. There's no, like, oh, you could all learn to get along and you could just raise your kid to actually just respect the queen, even though the people are going to regret it uh, or not like it. And then, I don't know, like, you know, shit will work out. I don't know. <laughs> like, there's, a, there's no third option. It's just like, yep, shit's fucked. Bit weird. That's what I thought. Um, what else from this episode? I don't Here's the uh, new creepy dude. Oh, who the fuck's that? Um, bloody yeah, uh, little finger looking motherfucker. Little, <laughs> little, no, little finger sounding motherfucker. He's the son of the new hand. Is he? Yeah, that's what the because Allison says because originally he's like, oh, you know, sorry about your dad or whatever, and then she's like, well, you know, like, congrats to your father for becoming the hand, or you know, like some shit like that. So yeah, he's the son. Yeah, Larry Strong. Hand. But yeah, I don't. I don't feel like he is his father's. He's called the. He's called the clubfoot. So, okay. I guess that's apparently. 
reference to the fact he has a walking stick and yeah, he's got a burst some, effect. I was about to say some alarm, alarm, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a weird dude. Yeah, you know, sowing distrust and that kind of stuff. You know, letting uh, Allison find out about the tea that you know Renera may or may not drunk last episode. I'm gonna say she definitely drank it. So. Also, why is it so weird that she's like, um, as soon as like he's saying like, "Oh, she got brought tea," and her initial reaction is like, "Oh, I know tea. exactly what that means." Yeah, tea is fucked. Like, the, there's only one reason you drink tea around these places. You would drink well, wine. Well, I guess like it's made by person. the maester, <laughs> sent by the king. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what what if she just had a cold or something? I don't know. You know I what mean, I mean? Yeah. Like but, you know, it, in, it... in Westeros, you jump straight to, you know, abortion tea. Yeah, abortion tea. That's apparently a, a very common thing that people would first expect. Or, or, or plan tea. Mm. Good one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very good. I can't see your face at the moment, with how we're recording today. I was yeah. pretty happy with myself. Yeah, I can imagine uh. you were pretty happy with yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for this week's episode. Uh, I, I mean, well, I think it was there's Damon... They've been making moves on Lano's sister uh, in the dance. Oh, yeah. He, he's just playing a game of friends there. I don't think he has a, any. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, they get married at the end. Like, in secret. No real wedding. Just get it over and done with as quick as possible. Yeah. Eloped, almost. Yeah. What Do you reckon that's just because of the drama caused at the... Yeah, I absolutely believe it. That, and I think Viserys is worried himself that he might not be along, around long, so... So he just forces it. Because the way they shoot it and the way they make it out, it's like, it's literally that night. Right? Yeah. I'm not, well, yeah. the way they shoot it, the blood's still on the gr- on the floor. Yeah, from the old, from mate, old mate's face. face. Yeah. I mean, Kristen Cole smashed, put, made his face mush. Yeah, like literally. He, he looked like um, old mate, the, the viper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is why this is why I don't understand. Like we're going to go into next next episode, and somehow Christian Cole's still going to be around. I find that hard to believe because there's no way that I just don't know how he explains that to Viserys, to uh, you know the king, to uh, his the, the king that would be or whatever. Like the I don't king understand. consort, yeah, yeah. That, I don't yeah. know how he explains like why he did this. Like what's what's the reason? How does he get away him? with it? Yeah, yeah. Um, As someone who apparently has a big. Um, Guilty conscience. I, I just can't imagine him committing to some elaborate lie to explain why he did what he mm. did. I just don't. I don't know how he gets out of that. Even if Allison tries to help him get out of it, I just don't. I don't know how he's going to lie. He seems to have like a very guilt-ridden conscience over what he's already done. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, next week. Next week. Um, next yeah. I mean, the other like, what's Damon going to be doing? Is he going to be moving up to the Irie? And like taking whatever section his wife had. Don't know. Oh yeah, for sure. Like he, he, it, there's no way he can't get it. That's the thing. They won't be able to prove that he killed his wife. Also, his wife was very pretty. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It's like he's uh, ugly. Uh, he said the cows look better the sh- here. The sheep like look better. Yeah. Sheep, the sheep look better here. Yeah. It was weird. Um, yeah, what a way to go out to just cross by a horse. And then have his next. Well, she so got paralyzed from the neck down, and then you yeah, know, he was going to leave her there. Um, and she had to you know, talk at shit. least you know, I think it was mercy. Really, you know, wouldn't it be terrible to just be stuck there in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, paralyzed. Probably nobody really going to come help you. Well, by the sounds of it, he didn't do anything super fucked up. It sounds like he literally just like smashed her throat in, so she died. Which, smashed her head in with a rock, so it looked which, like an accident. Yeah, so it stays in line with the other accident story still. But yeah, he's going to go claim what is technically rightfully his, even though he earned it by a dirty means. So, hmm. uh, see what happens there. I don't know what he cares for that property, or I guess he's going to attempt to take the other wed the other uh, other bloody person, another um, high town. No, high town. You know, Valerian. I'm getting all the people confused. Jesus Christ, whatever her name is, the girl. Hmm. Yeah, Lionel or something, I don't know. Yeah, take her there. Don't know. Try and make 
Like he's I don't know what his plan is really. He's a he's a weird, confusing character. I mean, I know he wants a crown in some way or another. He wants he a crown. He definitely wants he definitely wants uh Renera. Mm-hmm. I just don't know, like, what these long term. I mean, that is. conversation was interesting. Like her, like, telling him, "Hey, if you want me, come claim, come claim me." <laughs> I think she's just she doesn't. Actually she was just goading him. Yeah. yeah, she she knows he won't do it. So she's just yeah. being yeah, being Mom. a bitch. <laughs> being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, they'll do it. I think. Yeah. Got nothing else. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you for joining us for this week's episode of South of Kings Landing. Of course, we'll be back. Uh, we're about halfway. Well, now we are halfway through the season, so there you go. Shout out. Yeah. Uh, make sure you check out, of course, all our other after shows that are happening right now. Check out Holocron Entries for our discussion on Andor. Check out All New Marvelcast for our discussion on She-Hulk. And check out Lord of the Rings Extended for our discussions on the Rings of Power at the moment. And then check out what you want to watch for your weekly movie, TV, movie uh, podcast fixes over there. And check out explosion.com for all other things. Mm-hmm. And until next week, uh, you know, keep your head. 